Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to write a simple for loop in R. So let's say we want to replicate something a multiple of times. Let's do something simple, like I'm going to print out the word hello. So I know that when I execute this uh, function, when I run that, the word hello is going to be displayed one time in the console. Supposing I want to print the word hello 10 times. So the simplest way I can do that is I can copy and then paste, just using shift insert on my keyboard here, to uh, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So I've got the print command displayed 10 times. And if I select all of those and run them, we will see that the word hello is being displayed 10 times in the console down here. Now this violates a principle in programming called DRY, D-R-Y, which stands for do not repeat, don't repeat yourself. So you shouldn't do this at all costs. And we should have a, a in our case here, a for loop uh, to automate the repetitive part. So we don't want to do something like this 10 times. We only want to do it once and then use a loop to replicate that the number of times that we want. So I want to delete all of this here and learn how to write a for statement to do this. So the syntax for it is the, it's the function for it is for open and close brackets. Now, before we learn how to write the code for this, let's take a look at the syntax. So I want to click on the diagram here in my files and this diagram, as are all um, our scripts and exact sample files, are available in my GitHub, uh, the link to which you'll find in the information section uh, beneath this video on the YouTube page. So I'm gonna click on diagram here and this gives us uh, I want to look on the right hand side, it gives us a flow chart that we can see how a for statement is worked. It all works on the principles uh, of has the last or a certain value been reached. So what we want to do is ask the question, this is a decision box here, the di diamond in the center of the diagram, we want to ask the question, has the last item been reached? Now if it hasn't, then we execute the body of the for statement. So we do, we want to do, keep doing something until the last item is reached. So when the last item or a certain value is reached, then the answer is yes, and we exit the loop. So we want to keep doing something while a, a, while a value, a last value has not been reached or a particular value has not been reached. And this might be useful if, for example, uh, a certain temperature is reached or a lower temperature or high, a certain value is reached or in logistics, a certain stock level has, uh, has fallen below a certain number, then you would use statements like this to control. The sequence for this is we got the for statement and in our brackets, we have a value in a sequence. So I'm going to, the value I'm going to use is the letter I and uh, in the sequence we've looked at these before, I'm going to have a sequence of one to 10 here. And while that is true, I'm going to execute the statement, which in our simple version that we're going to look at here is a simple print statement. So let's write the code to see how this works. So on line four in the console, in the scripting area, uh, in the for statement, uh, I'm going to use I, as I mentioned, uh, the parameter next is in, and then I need to indicate my sequence, which is one colon 10, if I want to do it 10 times. So while i has a value of one to 10, I want to execute the following statement. It starts with an open and close bracket. So uh, Studio puts both of those in, press enter to give us a blank line on line five. My closing bracket is on line six. As always, be careful that you have matching brackets in all cases. So in the, sta in, in the statement here is, is my simple print statement again, print the word hello. So print that statement Look at the code before I execute it. Uh, so it's the for statement. So while i increments from one to 10, so we're gonna do this 10 times, we're going to print the message hello. So let's run this. And we can see in our console that the words hello have been displayed 10 times. The code hasn't been replicated. So we have written our first simple for loop. So if I want to do this 20 times, I just simply change the value from one to 20. I click on run. And we can see in the console that we've more hellos here. There are 20 hellos in total there. So whatever, so experiment with values there to print, do something simple like printing out a word or a message multiple times. You can see we've only typed out the code to print the print statement one times, but we've used the for loop to iterate that 20 times in this case. Now, supposing we want to perform a simple calculation, um, and this will also show us another important concept uh, of initializing variables in R. Supposing I want to do a simple calculation, and what I want to do is take a variable called x, so let's assign x, initialize it with a value of zero. 
So what I want to do is I want to increment this and add 1 to x 10 times. So I'm going to use my for statement again, for, open and close brackets. I'm going to use i again in 1 to 10. I'm going to do this 10 times. So this is similar to what I uh, printing hello 10 times. And an open and close bracket. I press enter and what that does then it gives me a blank line in between the brackets. Again, always be careful that you've got matching brackets for everything here. So in this uh, statement here, uh, what I want to do is I want to take my value of x and assign it a value of x plus 1. So in other words, uh, at the first iteration of my for loop, uh, x comes into the loop with a value of 0, so I want to add 0 plus 1 so that x has a value of 1 after the first iteration. The second iteration, uh, x comes into that with a value of 1, we will add 1 to that, and x will now have a value of 2, and so on until we get to the tenth iteration uh, when x will have a value of 10. To show this working, I want to use a simple print statement to show the value of x. So let's initialize x first of all, so run that. We can see in our global environment, and this is very useful to keep an eye on this when you're writing loops, we can see x has a value of 0. So now let me run the for statement. Again, a reminder, I'm going to do this, run this statement 10 times. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add 1 to x, and then I'm going to print that value of x. And I'm going to keep doing that until i reaches a value of 10. So let's run this piece of code. And we can see in our console, Indeed, that we uh, x comes into the loop with a value of 0. The first iteration we get uh, 0 plus 1 gives us 1, and so on until we get up to a value of 10. And at the end of the loop in the uh, global environment area, you can see x has a value of 10. Now, this is why you have to be careful with this. If I run this again, so I'm just going to run the for loop again, you can see um, something strange has happened. Uh, instead of going from 1 to 10, it's going from 11 to 20. Over in the global environment, you can see x now has a value of 20. So why is that happening? Well, we didn't reinitialize the value of x to 0. Therefore, at the end of this loop, x had a value of 10. And when we ran the loop again, uh, we uh, added 1 to 10 uh, and so on up until we got values of 20. If I reverse these in here, if I take the print statement instead of doing that second, so I'm going to delete that here and put it in before the um, um, increment, increment statement. So I want to reinitialize x to 0, check in the global environment, yes, x has a value of 0. And this time, uh, instead of incrementing x first and then printing out the value, I'm printing out the value of x and then incrementing it. So, incrementing it. so if you're following this, uh, when I print it the first time, x has a value of 0 because 1 hasn't been added to it yet. So when we print this out, x should have a value of 0. Then we add 1 to that. and We keep doing this 10 times until we reach a value of 10 for i. So let's execute these four lines. And you can see here in the output that instead of going from 1 to 10, it's going from 0 to 9 because we are doing the print statement first. So, th so th it's important that you understand how this works in order to really understand how loops work. So I'm going to take this out of here and I'm going to put it after the uh, increment statement, after the calculation, run my code again, reinitialize x to 0, look at it in the global environment, it has a value of 0, and then run the for statement, click on uh, the last part, run that, we can see we are back to 1 from 1 to 10. Finally, if I want to display some uh, text in my output, uh, I want to look at some years in this case here, let's see how that might work. So I'm going to write a for statement again, open, open and close brackets. And in here, I'm going to, again, uh, this time I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to use a variable called year. And in and this time, let's say I want to print out the years from 2010 to 2020. So 2010, colon, 2020. So while this is true, while year has a value, first value will be 2010, and the second value, uh, value will be 2011, and so on, up until values of 2020. So what do I want to do here? So open and closing curly brackets, press enter to give myself a blank line. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to print paste, print paste a message. So the message is going to be the year is, I'm going to put a little colon in there, and um, closing bracket. Just put in the um, double quotes, quotation marks in there correctly. 
year is and a comma after that and then my value for year all right so that's going to go from 2020 to 2010 to 2020 so um i don't need to initialize here so let's run this and we can see in our output that our code is generating the years 2010 2011 2012 and so on up until 2020 so it's only doing it for the sequence 2010 to 2020 uh, and it's displaying the message the year is the value of year in here so once again i urge you to experiment with different values in here you can try other years say from 1900 to 1999 uh, change the message uh, change the value of the calculations in, in the for loop and even to change uh, an experiment with repeating messages over and over so that's how you write a simple for loop in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.